Well, um, good evening. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Spenny Tasman again. And uh, now I'd like to deliver a lecture on Chapter 9 of Management Information System course under the title E-commerce, Digital Markets and Digital Goods. Basically, in Chapter 9, it is uh, focusing more on uh, the interaction of uh, customers uh, with uh, seller through the platform of that is uh, what chapter 9 is all about and it is about uh, transaction uh, purchase and uh, transaction that can be done uh, through e-commerce in this uh, chapter i am supposed to uh, make you understand on what are the unique features of uh, e-commerce digital markets and digital goods those uh, principle involved in uh, e-commerce business and uh, its uh, revenue uh, models and how actually e-commerce has transformed our market from traditional market brick to brick uh, to business to business or consumer to business and explain how uh, does e-commerce has affecting the business uh, to business transaction, particularly in terms of uh, bis uh, commercial business operation. And last but not least, the last part of this chapter is focusing on mobile commerce in which nowadays has been uh, the uh, most important factor that is strengthening e-commerce in the uh, global business. Well, uh, electric commerce, basically uh, the transaction by using uh, internet uh, platform so that the buyer can uh, buy it from seller and the seller can reach uh, the customer in order uh, to do transaction as far as uh, selling and purchasing. Actually, e-commerce uh, by history uh, significantly be began at 1995 and since then it is grew at exponentially and there are certain stages uh, that it is kind of uh, stagnant due to bubble.com recession and one of the leading player of uh, e-commerce platform in 1995 is basically amazon and again nowadays due to uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, i believe that e-commerce has uh, become stronger and stronger of platform in doing transaction well, do you notice uh, this guy? So this is uh, the richest man in the world, or one of uh, the top three richest men in the world, by the name of uh, Jeff Bezos. So he is the founder of uh, Amazon.com back in 1995. And now due to his uh, e-commerce uh, platform business, so he amassed uh, as much as 160 billion in terms of uh, his worth uh, by this year evaluation, year 2020. So Jeff Bezos is uh, basically uh, one of uh, the earlier pioneer and later soon followed by the other uh, <coughs> e-commerce platform like Alibaba and the later stage uh, by Tencent. So these are all the three major global players in e-commerce nowadays around the world and they are really making a big amount of money uh, out of e-commerce through the internet platform. Well, you can see this diagram in your textbook, uh, in your uh, e-book. So here is the growth uh, of the graph on the revenue generated by B2C, which is business to consumer. For example, if you are purchasing book from Amazon.com, so those are from business to consumer back in 1995, 1996, uh, in which it is its uh, infancy and it grows quite uh, uh, significantly uh, in year 2004, 2006. The growth is rather significant and uh, by the end of the decade of the new millennium, like 2007, 8, and 9, and slightly 2010, there were the crisis for uh, dot-com companies. The bubble uh, was bursting. So here is uh, quite stagnant in which 
most uh, internet company are experiencing kind of uh, decline uh, in terms of their share value. So soon after 2010 and 11, and it shoot up again as high as a uh, steep uh, degree angle of increase, 45 degree. And even nowadays, uh, during the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, I believe year 2020, this uh, graph is even soaring uh, higher to the higher level. And even at uh, this tax at 2016, it has value of about uh, 550 US billion dollar in terms of e-commerce worth. And I believe nowadays uh, it is uh, year two, uh, 2020, it is easily uh, approaching uh, perhaps uh, 800 or 850 billion dollars somewhere around here due to the transaction at e-commerce platform has become uh, skyrocketing due to the limitation of the interaction between uh, physical customer to customer. So people tend to purchase uh, through the internet platform, either by e-commerce platform or a mobile uh, commerce platform. So we talk about the e-commerce and the internet. I believe some of uh, these symbol are quite typical significance uh showing the importance of e-commerce uh, the internet in malaysia well you talk about uh boost uh, that is the platform for digital money payment grab this is due to smartphone shopee it is an online uh based business and panda food this is due to smartphone so all these are main symbol in malaysia uh, that you could uh, easily recognize that uh, has significant in e-commerce and the internet as far as uh, Malaysia e-commerce is concerned. So there are uh, main eight features of the internet and the web that make e-commerce so significant and so influential. The first thing is ubiquity and then global reach, uh, universal standard, richness and so on until up to social technology. So in which I will explain uh, one by one subsequently in my slide. First, ubiquity. E-commerce and internet has become so prevalent and so famous, uh, widely accepted due to its nature in ubiquity. What does ubiquity mean? It means that as long as you have the internet access and you have the web technology, you can do the transaction of e-commerce almost everywhere, whether it is at your home, during your traveling, or during you uh, waiting for bus and at almost any time, either it is in the morning, late night, or even uh, so much so early in the morning. So that is ubiquity. So the effect is that this ubiquity makes e-commerce become a very big market space. It is not only limited to Malaysia, it is overall uh, all over the world. And ubiquity and e-commerce and internet has made the cost of doing transaction has becoming uh, negligible or I would say very cheap if it is not uh, free. So imagine that cost for participating in the market, uh, in the physical uh, market is very high because you got to go to the shop, you got to drive, park and then go, go into the outlet and see the product and purchase. Nowadays you can, due to ubiquity, you can get your product at almost significantly lower price due to the e-commerce and internet platform. However, of course, internet is not without problem, without constraint or without uh, hindrance. So even though uh, internet is available widely in Malaysia, as much as it is estimated 60% of Malaysian population can have access to internet, but there are still 40 more percent of the population are not having access to the inter internet. So what's the problem? The major problem is, of course, the accessibility uh, due to the uh, bandwidth reach. Right, so if you want to access to internet, you can go to the fiber network or copper line or local area network, or you can go by Wi-Fi or by radio signal. So that is what constitutes of accessibility or the bandwidth. Why uh, accessibility and bandwidth is still the problem to access internet? Well, you could say that due to the limited uh, at certain area, limited communication tower and due to certain 
geographical reason between continental and large ocean. So we have a limited internet access. So that is the only limiting uh, obstacle that contributing to the problem of internet access. The rest, if you could have a better technology to have a better accessibility, perhaps the whole world could be accessed from any part of the world as far as to access the internet. So maybe if you are in the city like this, it is very easy to get access to the internet. But if you go to a resort uh, far there near the forest, perhaps you have a hard time to have access to the internet due to this accessibility, uh, accessibility and bandwidth. So what we could do about that to increase the accessibility and bandwidth uh, in order to access internet? Well, what you could do. So at least uh, nowadays, there has been effort recently by the uh, Google uh, in which it acquires Titan Aerospace uh, instead of relying on satellite uh, to get the internet uh, accessibility. So the number of satellites are limited. Uh, they are proposing that uh, this uh, solar uh, drone uh, to be functioning as satellite uh, far above uh, our sky there. So it could uh, receive signal and also transfer back signal. So this is one effort to uh, increase the accessibility of internet from any part of the world, any part uh, of the city, either it is in the big city or is it in the deep in the forest or deep uh, in the uh, remote area, you still can access internet if we really uh, to implement this uh, drone technology uh, to receive and deliver internet signal. So let's take a look what uh, Google has done uh, through the purchase of Titan Aerospace in an effort to increase global accessibility uh, to the internet. So let's have a look. Even as it experiments with self-driving cars on the ground, Google has been acquiring companies that manufacture pilotless flying vehicles, aircraft, that can stay aloft for very long periods of time, such as solar-powered balloons and drones. The internet giant aims to bring web access to remote areas of the world, which it says could help speed disaster relief or monitor environmental damage. And it says atmospheric satellites could also provide high-resolution aerial images for its Google Earth service. Its newest acquisition, the 20-employee New Mexico-based company Titan Aerospace, plans to manufacture a larger version of its successful solar-powered drone Solar. Chief Technical Officer Maximus Yeni says it will be as efficient as a satellite, but much less expensive to operate, just one hundredth of the cost. What we're focusing on from the capability perspective is being able to provide these kinds of services as an alternate or adding to uh, satellite platform capabilities. He says the new drone, Solara 50, will be able to fly almost 20 kilometers above the Earth, providing the internet signal in a radius of almost 420 kilometers and stay aloft for almost five years. Solar powered, you have the capability of staying up there. So you have heard uh, from the key people at Titan Aerospace and Google that they are planning to uh, use this solar drone uh, as satellite uh, to receive and uh, transfer or deliver the internet uh, bandwidth. So this part of the effort to improve the accessibility of internet around the world. So as such, the internet uh, and e-commerce platform will become a more global. Uh, it has a global reach uh, in which it will across uh, national, many national boundaries all around the world uh, as a result of this uh, Google and Titan uh, collaboration or the merging. So the effect is that you could have a big market space anytime, anywhere in the world. Uh, due to this uh, global reach and you could uh, do business uh, transaction and so communication with your friends uh, from many parts of the world. It is estimated nowadays, nowadays about 40% uh, of the world population has the ability to connect internet. 
but it means that there are 60 percent uh, more of world population still are not accessing internet so again the constraint is on accessibility uh, in order to uh, transfer internet signal <clears throat> so it means that uh, around uh, in year 2015 uh, about five years ago uh, 3.2 billion people uh, are able to access the internet so this is a very big market uh, 3.2 billion of people are able to access your product if you use the internet platform so another features that enabling the e-commerce and the internet so become so famous and prevalent so it is due to the universality of the standard for example the standard are all the same uh, around many part of the world for example uh, standard for sharing graphical files in uh, jpeg uh, in uh, mp4 for video so these are all applied to um, many countries many part of the world for example in asia in europe in us we all use the same pdf format for graphic mp4 and etc for uh, video uh, content so as such uh, if uh, there is good universal standard it means that uh, it will lower the cost uh, to enter new market. So um, it is easy for business people to bring uh, their goods, uh, whether it is physical goods or digital goods from one market to another market. So another universi universality of a standard is in the form of a domain name system like uh, World Wide Web, uh, .uthm.edu.my. From any part of the world, you can access this very same address, not only in Malaysia. So that is the global standard that can be accessed by uh, many uh, people around the world with the same name. Another feature of e-commerce uh, and the internet is uh, so uh, prevalent nowadays is the richness. Uh, it, means, uh, it shows the magnitude and the volume of content which is available over the uh, internet in the uh, in the form of a video audio uh, text message like twitter so uh, nowadays it is uh, possible to deliver these uh, vast messages either text audio or video uh, synchronously uh, to many people at almost at the same time so in the media in medium platform like uh, youtube or Netflix, you can see there are there are vast amount of content in order for sharing uh, by many people. Among the other features uh, of uh, e-commerce and the internet that uh, make it so globally influencing, uh, interactivity in which uh, it promotes the interaction between user seller. So in the form of like uh, pricing, you could compare prices uh, from different different kind of uh, hotel at uh, pl platform like Traveloka, Trivago and Booking.com. Uh, you could compare almost the same hotel, check their prices and com make comparison. So this is a good interactivity between uh, vendors uh, for the same value of service. Information density is again another factor that contribute e-commerce and the internet are so popular because the information is so large. Uh, you can, uh, in fact, uh, have the uh, market participants uh, all around the world. Due to that, you could compare uh, courses uh, between services. You could uh, compare price uh, between uh, I would say products and it, and it is enabling merchant, uh, business people and also consumer to compare price very easily. For example, book sold at uh, Amazon and Lazada, you could compare easily. So it is uh, enabling people to make a better and more efficient decision. <clears throat> Another factor is due to personalization or customization so that people like to go to website in which that they can, uh, could tailor, uh, set their, uh, I would say, purchase or website uh, based on their own uh, wish. For example, like uh, Amazon, you can set your own account uh, with your own picture and from there it attracts people to come to uh, this kind of website due to personalization and customization features. 
another features that enable uh, e-commerce and internet uh, so influential is the social technology in which social technology push for users to generate their own content and contribute their content towards the central uh, server. So, of course, we would like to uh, have our own unique content instead of the, our content uh, look all the same with other websites. So, this uh, approach, which is uh, promoting user content generation, uh, making social technology more acceptable, uh, more uh, larger audience uh, to embrace and use. For example, at Facebook, you could, you could customize your own uh, web page, Instagram and YouTube, you can uh, cr create your own account, customize it and upload your own content uh, to be shared to the rest of the world. What are the effects uh, of the internet at the uh, marketplace? Well, there are many effects uh, that you could uh, yourself uh, observe and feel, for example, uh, lower down the cost. Uh, in the internet, in order for you to show many products uh, uh, at the website, it is very easy uh, because you can just upload your product and show to uh, the potential customer. However, if you compare with the uh, brick uh, market in which you uh, you have to display it in the uh, in the rack or you have to display it in the uh, display uh, board. Uh, and it will cost you much more in comparison to showing or displaying your product on the website because the costs are very low uh, per unit cost in comparison to a normal shop. So, for example, uh, in the internet and market space, because you could compare between product and pricing, so you could see more this intermediation, which is lesser middle, uh, middle parties or middle men uh that normally it contributes uh, to the increase of cost for example if you want to purchase this kind of computer backpack you could easily uh, purchase it over the internet and compare to this uh, the to uh, this very same bag uh, with the outlet so i think a price i think you can significantly find easily 10 to 20% uh, lower cost in uh, for you to purchase it uh, based on the internet platform. So those are the effect of internet in the marketplace. Basically, it reduces the cost uh, to uh, customer or to buyers. Here is a comparison of pricing between the manufacturer to a distributor and retailer for, for example, a sweater. Say you want to buy this uh, Adidas sweater uh, from the three ch available channels from manufacturer, distributor, retailer, and manufacturer or straight to retailer like uh, al Ihsan Sport, or you want to buy the same sweater uh, from the manufacturer, from the factory, straight to customer through Adidas website. So if you buy from manufacturer, uh, distributor, retailer to customer, like from Giant, perhaps this sweater Adidas cost you $48.50. Uh, that is around 200 uh, ringgit Malaysia. But if you purchase it through manufacturer uh, to retailer, which is uh, Al Iksan, perhaps it will cost you around uh, $40.34. Uh, so this is uh, roughly uh, 160 uh, ringgit Malaysia. So significantly reduced from 200 to 160 reduction of. Uh, 40 uh, ringgit Malaysia basically. However, if you purchase straight from manufacturer from the factory uh, uh, via Adidas outlet and you are purchasing here at perhaps the cost of $20.45. So, so this is uh, basically uh, about 80, uh, 80 ringgit, so less than 100 ringgit Malaysia. So as comparison from uh, around 200 uh, 200 ringgit uh, uh, up to about 100 ringgit. So that is a significant price different in comparison from buying uh, from uh, Giant and compared to al Ihsan and also buying direct from Adidas outlet. So those are the this intermediation that internet has contributed and enable for cost, uh, customer to buy the same value product at a very much lower price. 
Nowadays, many goods uh, can be bought and sold digitally uh, in the form of uh, video uh, products or software. For example, you are purchasing Microsoft uh, Software 365 uh, Microsoft Office package. You could simply just download it from their uh, server and make the purchase digitally over the internet, uh, charging your uh, credit card or your debit card, for example. So digital goods uh, sold at the digital uh, platform, normally uh, the cost of delivery is very low because it doesn't incur much physical goods transfer. So you just can buy the uh, digital product over the internet and the cost is normally very much lower compared to the conventional method. As such, the industry of digital goods are actually experiencing a revolutionary, uh, revolutionary changes as far as uh, publisher of books, uh, producer of record, uh, records. Uh, so they are uh, experiencing uh, very significant change as far as their business model. In e-commerce and business technology, uh, there are three major types of e-commerce. For example, uh, business to consumer, uh, B2C, uh, for example, uh, as shown by Amazon.com, in which Amazon is the business and you buy books from Amazon, then you are the consumer and business to business. So for example, this is uh, basically one company to another company, uh, one company uh, supplying product to another company for their manufacturing, for example or even consumer to consumer, like one consumer want to sell their used goods to other consumer, like uh, by platform mudah.com. And these are the major three types of uh, e-commerce uh, nowadays widely accepted, uh, particularly you can see uh, in Malaysia. So another category that is newly upcoming and becoming very strong is called mobile commerce, which is M-commerce in which in more detail I will explain at a later uh, end of my chapter uh, in this lecture. E-business model. So in the form of e-tailer, e content provider, portal, service provider, there are many models that business could emulate in order to execute their business. It could be from B2B or C2C or B2C uh, uh, approach. So all can be done uh, with on this uh, e-commerce business model. And e-commerce uh, also could generate revenue or it can generate income through advertising, uh, uh, sales of product, or it could be by subscription, perhaps monthly or yearly uh, due to, or due to uh, transaction fee or through affiliation. For example, uh, e-commerce revenue model that uh, could generate uh, income is uh, Google AdSense, or you could uh, pay by commission by selling the product through mudah.com. These are part of the revenue generating model that business can emulate. Well, uh, social networking and wisdom of crowd. Well, people say uh, two is better than one, and of course, uh, three is better than one. So this is the wisdom of uh, crowdsourcing. Because the more people uh, see uh, the service or the product, uh, the more feedback they can give uh, to the supplier or to the host. So people can see this like from uh, like uh, Facebook, uh, those that make uh, product viral. So those are part of the wisdom of the crowd and crowdsourcing. So LinkedIn also uh, another platform that enable people to see your uh, professional credential and uh, if you are applying job, so many companies can see your credentials. So that is also a part of wisdom of the crowd, which is the more people see your resume uh, and the more people will uh, strongly recommend uh, you for the jobs. E-commerce marketing, it could be in the form of uh, long, uh, long tail uh, marketing in which it enables you to reach a big audience uh, at a very low price. So if you serve the internet, remember that the internet is uh, 
is able also to trace your behavior of purchase. So perhaps what sort of product that you are always looking for, be it like uh, shoes or be it like electronic gadgets or be it like food. So that is uh, also enable uh, the uh, internet uh, to uh, detect your preferences of purchase. Basically, uh, advertising work uh, in the internet uh, works this way. So this is your merchant site. You consumer interact with merchant site, for example, like Amazon.com. And later, a merchant will uh, connect to adv their advertising network. And later, they create your user profile database. And this advertising network will contact some of other member suppliers uh, vendor. And this vendor will feedback to advertising uh, network. And this advertising will advertise you with the tendency of you uh, when you search internet, what is your preferences? So this is how the advertising network mechanism works. Well, uh, other thing is that social media uh, like Facebook, they emphasize on the uh, number of like buttons uh, that people uh, thumbs up. So these are part of the social networking approach in which uh, whether the topic that you are advertising uh, receiving good response or not. So these are part of uh, the how internet detect your preferences. B2B commerce is uh, well known that it is uh, established uh, much earlier compared to B2C, like uh, back in 2012 itself, uh, this is about eight years ago, uh, U.S. Uh, reported that it is uh, worth of 4.1 trillion. I believe it is uh, very much bigger than that. Perhaps it was uh, already reached uh, around uh, 800 uh, trillion uh, nowadays as far as B2B is commerce is, con uh, is concerned. Electronic data inter interchange is basically keeping uh, a closed system between the uh, firm, like the company, like Siemens, uh, with their supplier. So it is kind of a closed system in order for Siemens uh, to uh, make transaction purchase from their supplier and the supplier uh, give the shipment data and later Siemens uh, make the payment to supplier and EDI is basically a closed system within normally big companies that are doing business with their supplier. And it is called also PIN, Private Industrial Network private uh, exchange network normally among big conglomerate like uh, Volkswagen. Uh, Volkswagen is the big sister company and these are all their uh, companies that within the network of uh, Volkswagen and they are keeping the PIN uh, private industrial network within Volkswagen in terms of doing business. In other words, it is a, a system that works for particular network, uh, especially uh, the big business. For example, like recently, uh, Proton is teaming up with uh, Geely and Geely has also acquired Volvo. So this is a big industrial network for automobile uh, in such a way that some of the parts that Proton are using could be shared with Geely and some of the uh, parts that uh, Volvo is using can be shared with Geely also. So this is uh, like a sharing platform in such a way it is enabled that for the cost of the final product, can be reduced by having this business industrial network. Uh, equally big like uh, restaurant NSM in Malaysia, uh, they are big group so that when they are big group, they can make big purchase and per unit cost uh, will become lower. That's why they can have, uh, they, they are able to offer good price for customer as far as their product is concerned. So that is how a big industrial network works together so that they can make a bulk purchase and each unit becomes significantly lower price. Again, this is a PIN, private industrial network, as I explained earlier, uh, Siemens. Siemens is here. These are their supplier. These are their another supplier. This is perhaps their customer. So this is basically supplying. All these are supplying to Siemens and Siemens are supplying to their downstream distributor, retailer. So these are very big private industrial network uh, uh, 
uh, that's why they can uh, run e-commerce with a significantly lower cost. Exostar is another network marketplace in which supplier uh, supply their product into this uh, digital marketplace as far as their product line, catalog, sourcing, pricing, and the buyer, all the buyer, either uh, personal buyer or industrial buyer, go to naked, uh, net marketplace in order to see the catalog, the pricing, the purchasing, and so on. And this is uh, another example of a network marketplace in this enabling the supplier to easily meet the buyer by a single platform, for example, Exostar. Last but not least, uh, this uh, chapter uh, covers on mobile commerce. Well, I would say mobile commerce has uh, become so much popular nowadays in year 2020 uh, due to many reasons. For one reason is that you can see these symbol are all very familiar to you. These are due to mobile commerce platform, due to smartphones, right? Smartphone enable people to get their transportation easily. Smartphone also enable people to buy their food very fast. And smartphone also enable people to do shop online for their needs and can uh, be delivered to them in a very short time. So these are basically mobile uh, in the palm of your hand. These are the growth of uh, mobile commerce around the world back uh, 10 years ago, 2010. And you see this uh, also experiencing a very significant uh, increase as far as 45 degree angle is concerned growth. Now is uh, 2020. I believe this is easily reaching uh, by year 2020 already 200 billion. And nowadays some more smartphone has become more prevalent due to COVID-19 because tendency to purchase from online has been uh, skyrocketing. So I believe mobile commerce uh, will become a much a stronger platform soon in the future. Mobile platform also enable a few other services, for example, location-based service. Location-based uh, service means that uh, people uh, are using the service due to location, for example, ways. When you travel, you are referring to this navigation system. So actually, you are uh, based on geo science service, uh, geo social services, where to find friends, where to find location. So when you try to find two locations, so meantime they advertise uh, you with the relevant services, for example, fast food, uh, for example, petrol for your car. So these are enabling uh, M commerce uh, to become stronger uh, due to your location. So I think. Uh, in order for e-commerce to uh, perform well, you need to somehow build the website uh, and hosting the website. So if you want to host the website, so these are part of the budget as far as hosting the website is concerned. So website is the component that enable e-commerce to function. So if you are hosting a website, uh, the cost is basically 30% is from designing the website. Normally, uh, companies outsource the, uh, the design of the website uh, to particular IT company, for example, like Exabytes. So they, uh, they design the website for particular company. So the cost is about 30% of the overall cost. And the content development, like uh, cataloging, uh, pricing, uh, up, uh, up, uh, uploading, uh, product line and so on, telecommunication for bandwidth, uh, hardware like server and some costs on marketing. So the overall, yeah, the bigger part is the design of the website that mostly company outsource uh, to other company uh, to do the job. Okay, by that, I would like to wrap up chapter, uh, this chapter, chapter uh, on e-commerce, digital market and digital, digital goods. I think this uh, has been around 30 or 35 minutes. So I thank you for your attention in following my lecture through this uh, uh, chapter 10. Thank you again.